Hello and welcome to part 40 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.6. In this video, I'm going to be covering the Bevel tool. Now you might be thinking to yourself that the Bevel tool is a pretty small tool to be covering in its own video. And you might be right, but the Bevel tool is a tool that I missed the most when I switched over from Blender 2.49 to Blender 2.5. Blender 2.49 was the old version of Blender, which had many features uh, that didn't exist in Blender 2.5 because they rewrote the entire program and therefore were missing some of the features that they hadn't updated yet for the new version. With Blender 2.63 uh, and the addition of uh, BMesh and NGONS, they brought back some of these features, but only now with Blender 2.66 is the Bevel tool back in full strength and it has a new feature which I'm going to talk about as well. So to use the bevel tool I'm going to click on the splash screen to get rid of it and I'm going to zoom in on this cube to use the bevel tool. We have to have a mesh selected and we're going to press tab to go into edit mode. Now the bevel tool is used most commonly on an edge so I'm going to go down and switch into edge select mode and select just one edge and to use the bevel tool we usually or I used to press the W key which brings up the specials menu when you're in edit mode and I would go down to bevel and that's how I would use it. But it also has its own keyboard shortcut, it's control B, so I'll be using that from now on. So I'm going to press control B and to use the bevel tool you have to press control B and then move your mouse uh, in any direction. It works best if you move your mouse in the direction of one of the edges that's perpendicular to the edge that you have selected. So I can move my mouse following um, this uh, side edge or the edge that goes down. So either edge that's perpendicular. As you can see when I move my mouse, um, that single edge becomes split into two edges and some more geometry gets made just to make it work, to make one edge into two edges with some attaching edges in between to make it a diagonal or angular edge. I can move my mouse back and forth to make it any size that I want. I don't want to go over, but um, any size that it was within the bounds of the original uh, shape and I can click to make that permanent. Now we can also make this a smooth uh, bevel as well. I'm going to press Control Z to undo and I'm going to press Control B to bevel and I'll move my mouse to the right, same as before. But this time I'm going to scroll up with my mouse wheel. So I'm going to scroll up once and as you can see that bevel is no longer just one flat diagonal edge. It's been subdivided uh, one more time because I scrolled up once. I can continue scrolling up though, and as you can see, every time it gets subdivided one more time. So now there's um, three faces instead of one, and now there are four and five and six and seven, and I can make it a really smooth edge uh, as, as far as I desire, and I can continue to uh, make it a big or a small uh, bevel and click when I'm happy, and that's my finished uh, beveled edge. Now I can do the same with two edges or more edges selected, in fact maybe I'll do three this time. So I'm going to press uh, Control B to bevel this, these edges out, and as you can see it bevels it out nicely, and I can scroll up to make it more smooth, and continue to scale it until I'm happy, and there we go, that is the newly subdivided or beveled uh, with a smooth bevel edge. You can also use the bevel tool with faces, so I'm going to select uh, or go into face select mode and select just this top face and we'll press control B and I'll move my mouse and as you can see it becomes more like a picture frame. Again I can scroll up with my mouse wheel uh, to make it more smooth and I can continue to make it bigger or smaller um, as long as you don't go uh, of course over and click when I'm happy with that result. So that's the bevel tool as far as we've always known. I'm going to press Control Z to undo. The new feature in Blender 2.66 is the ability to bevel vertexes, which has never been possible before. I'm going to switch into vertex select mode down here and select just one vertex. Now to bevel this one vertex is kind of a funny thing because vertexes are not really a shape. They're only a one single coordinate in 3D space. Uh, and that's why it hasn't been possible to bevel it, because it doesn't really uh, have any volume of its own. Uh, but if I press Control shift b not just Control b but Control shift b that's going to allow me now to bevel that vertex. So now I can press, uh, or move my mouse rather, side to side, 
and that single vertex gets split into three. And the reason why it's a triangle now is because there were three edges that were running away from that single vertex. If I had a different mesh and there were four edges coming out from that um, single vertex, it would be a four-sided polygon instead of a triangle. I'm going to Control Z that and we'll press Control Shift B again. I can not only bevel this with one face, if I scroll up I can smooth it out as well, although it does kind of do kind of a funny thing. And I can click when I'm happy with the size. And that is what a beveled um, vertex looks like on a cube. I'm going to Control Z that one more time and press A to deselect all and then A again to select all the vertexes. And if I press Control Shift B and move my mouse to the right, we can have make kind of a multi-sided die or a funny looking uh, shape like that. Of course, I'm going to Control uh, Z and then press Control Shift B again. I can do the same thing and I'm going to scroll up a few times to make it a smooth version of that same shape and press tab to go back into object mode and that's what that looks like. But here's the thing, the bevel tool was one of the most um, handy tools to use when you were modeling any object and when they got rid of it I had to get used to using the loop cut tool. The loop cut is of course control R and when you press control R when you're in edit mode you get this pink edge that you can um, move around by moving your mouse cursor over the mesh and when you want to make a cut you just have to put the, the, or, or the purple or pink line uh, in the right spot and then click and then you get the option to cut that mesh all the way around its um, ring of edges to make a new loop cut. So I'm going to click to make this permanent and now I have a new edge loop around this cube. I'm going to control Z that and I'm going to press Z to go into um, wireframe display mode and I'm going to do that again. So control R to uh, loop cut. This time we'll go up and down and I'm going to click and now if I right click um, I now get a loop cut that runs up and down the middle and all the way around this cube. Now that's great, but what if I actually decided later on that I wanted this, to, this edge loop to become two parallel edge loops? Well, I'm going to go into edge select mode and we will press A to deselect all. To select this edge loop again, I can hold the Alt key down and right click on this edge and that'll select the entire edge loop. So select two, so just right clicking on it selects one edge, but if I hold Alt and right click on it, it selects the whole edge loop. And now if I bevel this, so control B and move my mouse perpendicular to its direction, I can split that one edge loop into two. Not only can I split it into just two, but if I scroll up with my mouse wheel, it splits it up into many parts. So as you can see, if you're working on a more complicated mesh, and you want to redistribute the geometry so that you can make new change to the mesh, uh, this bevel tool can be quite useful in getting more and, and making things a more efficient process for getting different geometry or different edge loops along the same surface. The last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is one of the bugs that's apparent in the bevel tool. And I think they might have just fixed this with Blender 2.66a and that is, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and um, delete this cube and we're going to add, oops, add a new cube, is that if you scale your cube, I'm not sure if it's going to work as it usually would or if it, as it has in the past, but if you scale your cube and then try to bevel one of the edges that's affected by the, um, the scale, in other words, this edge is no longer the length that it used to be, you may run into problems where the bevel is not at a normal 45 degrees. I'm going to select this edge here and press Control B and then move my mouse. And it is 45 degrees and so that's good but sometimes it might not be especially if uh, this just happens to be a phenomenon and they didn't actually fix this bug. The way that you would get your bevel to look right again, in other words if it's too slanted if your bevel if, or if you're beveling and it looks more like that instead of like that then you need to go back into object mode and press Control A to apply and then click on scale to, to apply the scale that you just created of that mesh. If you're modeling and your bevel ever does not go at 45 degrees, 
then that's what you need to do, to do. Press tab to go back into object mode and then control A and select scale to get it back to the way it should be. And then using the bevel tool should work as you would expect. So that's it for the bevel tool. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.